Welcome to this week's episode of the DevOps Lab. In this episode, I have a very, very special guest with us, Paul. And Paul and I are going to talk about Dapper. Welcome to this week's episode of the DevOps Lab. This week, I have a very special guest with us. Welcome, Paul. Hey, hey Paul. How are How you? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Just sitting here coding, crafting a little bit. Awesome, awesome. Welcome to the show this week. Paul, can you tell everyone that's out there, who are you and what do you do for Microsoft? Yeah, uh, definitely. So I'm Paul Iknovich. I'm one of the lead product managers on the team. Um, my team is in charge of the Azure platform for developers. And we do things like frameworks and diagnostics. And the the most recent project that we're excited about is Dapper, which is the whole subject is of this thing. And that's really for microservice developers. Awesome. So we've heard a lot about Dapper. Um, you know, it's it's making its name through KubeCon with Kubernetes. And I think you guys just got a little bit of boost from CNCF, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, you're absolutely right. I'm I'm still on a little bit of a high from that. Um, we had been in the process of donating the project to CNCF and mm -hmm. CNCF uh, voted and we're now officially an incubations project, uh, awesome. which is really exciting. So we're going to be working alongside the community. You know, and we have been for a bit. We have maintainers that are multi vendor already. So there's Intel, there's Alibaba and there's Microsoft all um, contributing to this. And, and now we're part of CNCF. So that's just so cool. That is really, really cool. Congratulations to you and the team. That's a massive achievement, right? Um, so today we want to talk about what is Dapper and can you take us on that journey? Because I'm yeah. hearing so much about it. We talk about cloud native and microservices and distributed applications all the time. And and the fact that it's multi-cloud seems really cool. So Paul, take it away. Oh, cool. Yeah, that, and that's a really good point. So let's make sure I get to that. I mean, the first thing is we, for a couple of years, we've been looking at the what it takes to build distributed applications with microservices. Um, there's a number of challenges to do that um, and to do it at scale and to do it reliably. There's best practices that have built up mm -hmm. over time. So in comes Dapper. Um, Dapper is a set of APIs for building microservice applications. And really what it focuses on is adding reliability features and making your code completely portable. Um, so maybe we could dig into that a little bit. So the APIs, um, the first thing is you can think of um, APIs in this case as you have a sidecar process, not a sidecar container, but a sidecar process that's always sitting next to your microservices, let's say on localhost. And you can call localhost on a port, and then there's a set of RESTful APIs that are uh, they're ready to do heavy lifting for you, whether it's service communication, whether it's PubSub, whether it's talking to state stores, getting your secrets. That little sidecar um, is always there on localhost as an API ready to do things. And that's really one of the secrets behind how we achieve the reliability and the portability. Because when your code is consistently calling a set of APIs there in the sidecar, that sidecar could be spun up in any environment on your local machine, up in any cloud, it can be spun up in a VM, it can be Kubernetes native and run in a Kubernetes cluster. So your application only takes a dependency on those APIs and you can move those APIs through the sidecar um, really anywhere. Um, and that that's one of the most exciting things. And then also, um, let's take the example of working with state management, right? Mm -hmm. So if you wanna back up, um, or sorry, if you just wanna state manage and, and persist the state of your microservice, um, there's so many good choices out there. There's, you know, services in the cloud. Um, maybe you love Redis, you know, open source, whatever the case is. You still, you would write, let's say, to our API to read and write to that state store. And then just through a config setting, you can rebind to your favorite state management server, right? Whether, again, it's Redis, whether it's a cloud service, um, whether it's a like a blob storage, you can do all of those. So that gives you an example of what, you know, portability could look like. And I think portability is absolutely crucial. When we talk about cloud native and microservices, people are very conscious of vendor lock-in or the fact that most of our customers run in hybrid environments, whether it's on-prem, multiple clouds. Um, while we are kind of focusing on Azure today, uh, that's crucial yeah. for our customers to be able to do that. You know, that's huge. 
Yeah, thank, I, and I completely agree. So, like, let's separate two things. There's Dapper, the project, mm -hmm. uh, Dapper IO. It's free, open source. You know, it's FOSS. Yeah. And and really, we've we're taking work with the community, and um, we even built uh, support for all the major clouds and some of the favorite cloud services out there, and some of the favorite OSS out there. So, really, it is. Um, it is vendor neutral. Um, it works on all clouds. It's completely portable. And we totally understand that um, users and customers have to support multiple clouds. And so that was a huge kind of design decision that went into this. Um, and you also mentioned, you know, like there's edge and there's on-prem. Mm -hmm. So we see um, a, a lot of companies out there that are, you know, they're part of, they're going through that digital transformation and they've got a lot of great services that run on-prem, maybe in VMs, and then maybe they've got Kubernetes and maybe they've got things on cloud. So um, Dapper becomes this really cool kind of um, standard API that you can use to bridge all the different services and treat them as one API uh, for your organization. That sounds really, really cool. Um, Paul, can we see this in action? Yeah, that's a good idea. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch over to my demo screen. Um, Hopefully you can see this. I've got my Windows yep. terminal. I just upgraded to Windows 11, which I'm really loving. It's uh, awesome. snappy and snazzy. All right, so what I have here, um, a number of samples here. This is um, a cloud native sample that we just published as a part of the Azure Container Apps launch. Mm -hmm. And um, the services are really simple and, and so that the, the theme doesn't get in the way. So the idea is, we have a store API. So the theme, the domain here is, you know, we run an online store, we're taking orders, we have inventory, and we expect this thing to be reliable. We expect it to run at scale, have horizontal scale bursts, all that kind of stuff. So what we did is we exposed this API. That's kind of the gateway to all of our microservices. We put API management in front of it, which is really helpful for things like throttling and um, you know, ensuring quality of service and having um, a Swagger open API spec for everything. Mm -hmm. And then we have some microservices that do the heavy lifting. We have one that okay. handles the orders and we have one that's an inventory service. Um, so that's, you know, that's what we're trying to do here. And then when we pop to code, um, I have the same thing here. So that store API, we built a, a Node.js service that, that kind of handles that. And some of the heavy lifting would be done um, in these um, routes kind of controller classes. Yeah. And called Dapper, um, one thing I want to point out is it's a really light lift to use the APIs and to use the sidecar. So all we're really going to do is we're going to change the host port from whatever IP address that we're used to calling. Um, we're going to change that to just be localhost and then dynamically bind to the Dapper port. Okay. And I, I've talked about the sidecar process. This literally mm -hmm. is the sidecar process. Awesome. So we're going to change that. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same exact code I had, you know, like I have RESTful routes, you know, mm -hmm. to deal with orders, take parameters. Nothing changes there. I'm just going to set a header, Dapper app ID. Okay. And that's all I need to do to basically do service discovery and find my orders microservice app. Awesome. Um, and really that's it, right? And then Dapper Sidecar is gonna do the rest. It's gonna add resiliency. It's going to add MTLS. Um, if we decide that gRPC is more efficient than HTTP, we're gonna like encapsulate things over the wire. So like the, the heavy lifting that Dapper does for microservices takes place just by setting a header. That's awesome, because I've sat there and configured code to connect my microservices together. Because when we talk about a microservices architecture, there could be a lot of microservices playing in part, and you have a lot of like, effectively moving parts and triggers and whatnot. So that's really, really cool. It looks really, really easy to configure as well. Thanks, yeah, and I, I think it is easy. So for like microservice communication, this is where we can all start. Mm -hmm. um, let me show you an example of what it's like to run this. And we're awesome. just on the local machine. So let's go to our node service. And when you want to run a service with Dapper, you just put this Dapper run prefix. So we have a Dapper CLI. Um, and once you, once you have that, you can say Dapper run. And we have a few parameters where we talked about service discovery. So I'm going mm -hmm. to identify, oh, this is no Dapp, right? Yep. We don't need to know IP addresses or anything funky. Like Dapper will find it. Yep. Um, we know the port. 
Um, we'll talk about components in a second. And then at the end of it, we're just going to do what we normally did, NPM run start. Cool. And in that case, you know, Dapper is running. And if I, let's kind of bring up another window. I could say Dapper list. And the CLI, I can see now, oh, you know. There's that ID with the ports. Yeah, it's running. And it's, cool. I know all the ports, and I can see the sidecars there. If I look from a Unix Linux perspective, um, there's nothing funny going on. And I'll show you one more thing. From a Docker perspective, um, Dapper, let me be really clear. Dapper does not require Docker or containers, mm -hmm. but containers definitely make our development experience easier. Yes. So as a part of installing Dapper and doing the Dapper init command, um, what we do just for convenience is we lay down a few more containers. Like we lay down um, a placement service. If you're going to do virtual actors and have like thousands of objects, we have that thingy. Mm -hmm. We have a Zipkin container, so you get some okay. observability. And we have a Redis uh, state store. So it's all just there, and you can kind of like your dev environment's ready to go. Um, but let me be clear, you, we, you don't require um, you don't require it. Just kind awesome. Of, Very yeah. cool, though. Very cool. Yeah. And so let's go back here. So we, we ran the container, and I think that's one way to go. But you know, one thing I find, April, is memorizing or copying and pasting or you know making bash files or PowerShell files for this long command line. That's kind of mm -hmm. for the birds. So um, there's another open source project that I'm going to take advantage of here um, called Pi. OK. And um, Ty is just a, a simple YAML, YAML file. And here we've defined an ingress port in a really simple way. The three services we have, store API, order, and inventory are defined in that same command line, dapper run, yep. with our parameters. We just feed it in here. And now um, awesome. the nice thing about that is I can just say Ty run. Oops. Let's be in the right folder, Paul. Ty run. There we go. Awesome. And, and Ty, yeah, just orchestrates running all my microservices, putting them on the right ports, doing all that kind of jazz for us. It's so much easier, right? And then that's this, really cool. That's really, really cool. Thing. Oh yeah, yeah, thanks. And then here's another thing I really like. If you um, this little port eight thousand was exposed, and this yeah. is a, a little dashboard. Yeah. Port. Nice. That's yeah. really that's really handy to have to have that dashboard have that visibility. Yeah. And get the logs, obviously. Yeah, and get the logs so we can see everything's healthy. You know, you're getting the log tail. So, you know, for microservice development, I think this just kind of goes hand in hand. It's like a little mm -hmm. peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, that's very cool. A little peanut butter and jelly dapper sandwich. <laughs> a little peanut butter and jelly. Yes. Oh, should we test the app? I, let's oh, test it. Let's see what oh, happens. Got it. All right. So let's add a new order. You know, for April. And what do you want to order? I want a new bicycle. OK. Uh, cool bike, like a mountain bike, maybe? Yeah, why not? Racing bike. Yeah, have another racing bike. N plus one. All right, cool. So we we created an order. You know, and again, we're just calling a microservice. We're mm -hmm. uh, passing in a JSON payload. And that's all I outputted here. Okay. Um, and now that we've done that, you know, we can call our microservice interrogate it, and it's all kind of sitting there. And if I went back to the Thai dashboard, you know, again, I'm getting um, a log tail, and I can see I just restfully was calling orders, passing in yeah. your ID, and, and the data came back. Awesome. Um, so really, you know, like if, if I were to sum this up, um, Dapper made it easy to do things like service communication with service discovery. Um, but the important thing is once we set up this pattern, there's a lot more features that we can open up just by doing that. Um, so let me show you another example. One thing that we configured as a Dapper component is observability. In this case, yeah. I'm going to use Zipkin, which is really cool. You could use Zipkin, Open Telemetry, Application Insights. Um, so there's tons of great things we can hook into because the, the observability yeah. piece is huge when we're developing microservices and cloud native applications. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's absolutely huge. Like now we can know you know what's happening, why it's happening, and because Dapper has that sidecar architecture again, mm -hmm. we can basically insert a middleware like Zipkin in the middle um, and actually you know trace that request all the way through the microservice distributed trace. Right, so if I run here, 
those calls that we just made to order your bicycle, you know, they're right here. Um, oh, so we can trace that all the way through, see the logs on it, get the tags and know exactly where that order's going. Exactly where it's going. And if it fails, we're going to know why it failed. If it's slow, we're going to be able to see the exact microservice that took too long, right? We're going to be able to go fix it. Um, and this is another place where I can show off Dapper a little bit. So remember, we made an HTTP call to order just mm -hmm. using our favorite HTTP client in Express. Um, but um, if I look underneath, it actually was encapsulated as gRPC. And we did that yeah. for you because it's much more efficient over the wire. Um, and what you might find is, you know, as an API developer, you might want to expose HTTP and gRPC. Mm -hmm. And that will just handle that for you. It'll expose okay. your APIs. So it gives content. you lots of options on that. Thank you, Paul, so much for joining us today. Thank you all Thank for you, tuning April. in. And we're going to have some great links for you all to get started with uh, in the cold action links at the show notes. Mm -hmm.